This time we're going to go deep inside Windows 365 with Microsoft's Christian Brinkhoff. So join me and I guarantee you will learn something. Hi everyone, Andy here. So nice to see you and thanks so much for joining me. On today's episode, I'm joined by Principal Product Manager Christian Brinkhoff, Microsoft's expert in all things Windows 365. He's been with the product since the beginning and I've got to tell you that Azure Virtual Desktop and Windows 365 are pretty much hot property at the moment. And I've got to tell you there's some exciting cool things happening in that space. So in this episode, I'm in conversation with him. We're going to talk about exactly what it is, how you configure it, all about the licensing, as well as a whole bunch of tips and tricks. So stay with us because it's going to be a good one. Now, just a reminder that on the 7th of June, I'm running Dive Deeper Tech Days. This is your opportunity to dive in to everything to do with security compliance and Microsoft 365 for a whole day's training. Details below there. Now, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, then shame on you. Go ahead, bump on that subscribe button up there, ring that bell, and come and join our great learning community. And if you have questions and comments about this or any of my sessions, as always, just get those down below. So I would like very much to introduce you to Christian Brinkhoff. He's the principal product manager over there in Redmond for the Windows 365 team. Hey, Christian, how are you doing? I'm great, Andy. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be on your awesome show and uh, yeah, looking forward to the conversation together. Fantastic. So do you want to just tell everybody a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, sure. So I'm Christian Brinkoff. I work in Redmond, as you said, as well in the product group. The product group is called Windows and Windows Cloud. And that really means something, and we'll touch base on that in just a bit. Uh, what it means in terms of products, it's including Windows 365, AVD, and RDS as well. So one product team that owns all these products, and I'm uh, really uh, blessed to be part of this team, as well as being part of Windows 365 from, from kind of the beginning when it was still like a Visio stencil. And the great thing is that I come from a virtualization background, so before... I joined Microsoft via the Avis Logix acquisition in 2018. I used to be a freelancer. I used to be an MVP like yourself as well. And implementing services like uh, VDI solutions, I now had the opportunity to build something from scratch and solve the challenges you have been facing for the last 20 years inside the product. Um, yeah, looking forward to explaining you more on like how that works and what are the differences in, the, in this session as well. Awesome. Fantastic. OK, um, I, I will confess to you that <laughs> about a year ago, um, I did a, an initial session on Windows 365. It was about a year ago, maybe slightly le earlier than that. Um, and since then, I've not done a lot with it. So I'm really excited myself to kind of dive in and and have a look at it. And also the fact that it's integrated into one of my favorite platforms, which of course is Intune. I just absolutely love Intune. I think it's, and and I got to tell you that it's super popular with my audience out there as well. Um, now, for those of, uh, out there in my audience that don't quite understand the difference between the likes of Windows 365 and AVD, maybe you could just kind of clear that up for us. Yeah, it's a good question. And to be honest, it's probably the most reoccurring question we get from customers and, and the community as well. So what you really need to think about is that Windows 365 is our cloud PC offering. So everybody knows a PC. It started like 40 years-ish ago with a bold statement of a PC on every desk in every home. So everybody knows a PC, has a PC at home or some kind of a PC running Windows. and the cloud PC is, is really the cloud-based version of a PC, and hence why it's called cloud PC with uppercase PC in the brand. That means something. That's a bold statement, and that means that Windows 365 is more positioned as the future of Windows, just like Office 
went to the cloud, right, with Office 365, now Microsoft 365. The same journey right now is happening with Windows, moving Windows to the cloud. And we leverage virtualization stack components of that coming from AVD. So in the background, we leverage the AVD control plane, but we don't leverage the kind of complexity of that. So everything in Windows 365 is control, uh, controllable, manageable uh, via Microsoft Engine, as you said yourself. So you can pretty much end-to-end -end configure, provision a cloud PC in the Intune portal without bringing an Azure subscription in or any knowledge of VDI or things like that. So the whole like self-service kind of up and down scaling and things like that are just working in Intune. Endpoint analytics can be used for like resizing to a higher skew. We now have AI integrated in the resize feature. So if you're like having a couple of users that are just unutilizing uh, kind of resources like you, you, you have it yourself sometimes too, right? You have that CPU spiking up like 99% for a while that we can detect that and then size the cloud PC automated to a higher size. And that's kind of the, the future of how you should see IT admin experiences being more controlled by AI in the future as well. Um, but that's really what Windows 365 is in a nutshell. Easy, it's all SaaS based, so software as a service. So you pay a fixed price per month and you use Intune to configure that. And the great thing there is, especially for this audience, with Intune Knowledge, you can spin up a cloud PC. I always say, if you cannot do it with Intune Knowledge, I will buy you a free beer if you find <laughs> me somewhere. I might hold you up to that. <laughs> um, and so <laughs> looking at that, and now you, you just basically answered my next question. So talking about the licensing, you said that you pay a fixed fee and you get your cloud PC every month. Um, now, the, I was familiar with the fact that they had a business and they had an enterprise edition. And the enterprise edition was kind of, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it looked like it was more modeled on AVD, um, Azure Virtual Desktop, which is kind of a pay-as-you-go kind of model. Um, but you're, you're, is, is that different now or is that the same? Or? Yeah, let me share you a quick like like picture uh, diagram yeah. here that explains the two products like in a more granular way with each other. And one thing I want to quickly share before I go over a couple of those differences is uh, we have Windows 365 Enterprise. That's our fixed price enterprise product for like every customer that needs more than 300 plus like use. It's the same as like M365 and M365 sure. business in terms of licensing count. Um, it's completely integrated in Intune. We have our business product, which is kind of positioned as targeting small, medium businesses from one license to 300. So you have that in M365 business and business premium as well, targeting the more like accountant firms that are just a small shop, don't have that um, I, large of an IT department um, to manage and maintain their infrastructure. And therefore we build a business uh, as a very easy way to configure a cloud PC without Intune needs because Intune is, is is a great solution, but it still requires some kind of an enterprise expertise of management. Also important to mention is that we also have now Windows 365 Frontline, which is a new licensing offering. We GA that last September, which sits a little bit into the, hey, I'm a customer. I, I use like virtualization, Citrix VMware, other solutions. I use multi-user, like one VM with multiple users on that. And I want to kind of go to Windows 365, but the cost comparison doesn't really um, yeah, match up with kind of my budget. So what are you doing there? So we build a new offering, Windows 365 Frontline, that makes it possible to do the license sharing. So you get uh, one Frontline license, but you can configure three cloud PCs at the same time, but only with one active session. So if you have like yes. users that are morning shift workers, afternoon and evening, you can just buy one license and then you can assign three personal cloud PCs to those users and then benefit from the cost of just paying for just one license versus just three individual licenses. Sure, no, okay, that sounds cool. 
Um, I mean, I'm, I'm get, you know, down the line, you could even have a gaming license, I guess, for home users. There's, there's, you could take this anywhere, really, couldn't you? This kind of, um, you know, environment. Um, and I can obviously, uh, the idea is that, you know, if you had a really old clunky laptop, you could really, I suppose, extend the life of that laptop as long as you've got internet access. So I think that's a great way of what you just said. You can re. Um, yeah, repurpose or like re-leverage your, your existing hardware that is not capable to Windows 11, like using Windows 11 on that local device to stream that from the cloud with the simplicity of Intune and things like uh, like that. Awesome, awesome. Now, on the subject of Intune, I, um, I would love to see you demo it and kind of configure it and, and set it up for us. You got a, a nice demo for us. Okay, so what you see here is the uh, the Intune portal. Uh, so this is the new revisited Intune portal, the new design, as you probably all have seen already. And what you see here is uh, you can explore Windows 365 here from the right side, but you can also, and this is probably what every IT admin is doing, go to devices and then device onboarding and then click on Windows 365. And this is kind of where everything happens for Windows 365. So provisioning, if you have a custom image, you can configure it here as well. Uh, you can configure some user settings, like if you wanna make somebody a local administrator or you wanna configure restore points, so you wanna go back in time seven days or three days, you can all configure that here as well. Uh, but as well, features like Windows 365 Boot, which I'm going to show you a demo for in uh, in just a bit. But this is really where, where the blade, the portal that you should kind of use when you create a cloud PC. But then once you're like done with that, which happens like once you finish your provisioning policy in like 20, 30 minutes-ish, depending on which region and how many cloud PCs you provision, you can just continue doing what you normally do in Intune as well. Just go in the settings catalog, provisioning or, or configure policies and uh, enter ID group that Cloud PC added in there or the user is in there already. And then you just get it automatic, uh, automated, automatically configured on your Cloud PC. So very easy and just in the same mindset of yeah, what you do normally for a physical PC as well. So here you see my active Cloud PC. So I have 25, one fail. I don't know what the reason is, but I can click on that, go in Endpoint Analytics and troubleshoot that pretty easily. But let me show you how you configure and create a Cloud cloud PC. So the first step here is to go to the provisioning policies. And if you are new to Windows 365, you don't see any existing provisioning policies. So I just click on uh, add a provisioning policy. And here you uh, give it a name. So I'll do the, uh, the ND provisioning policy for now and um, description. So what we see as a practice customers do here is because the configuration of your provisioning policy includes the language of your cloud PC as well as the region of your cloud PCs that they use like naming conventions and prefixes for that in the name. So um, everybody has their own naming convention, but what we see across the board is that provisioning policies sometimes include the language as well as the region because you only need to create a provisioning policy once um, for a region if the, the settings are overlapping. You can even configure it based on like a department, like a finance users group, and then put in more of those prefixes as well. Now, just one question. You mentioned, we talked about licensing, so I can see the enterprise and the frontline option here. Is there a reason why we don't see the ba the business version? Yeah, that's a very good question. And the reason for that is that the business product doesn't require Intune. So we have a separated portal for that. So yeah. if you purchase the business license, you go to windows365.microsoft.com. And if you have the administrator role assigned to you, uh, which you automatically have when you purchase the license, uh, kind of, um, then you can just configure Cloud PCs in there for an even more simplified uh, yeah, end to end flow. So what you see here is enterprise frontline. Frontline gives that pool of license offerings. So if you have 100 frontline licenses, you can provision 300 cloud PCs. Uh, so that's over here. I will go for enterprise. And this is an interesting one because I think everybody is looking at going um, enter ID join native these days. So we support that. It's now all uh, supported with single sign on in GA. So this has been a feature that has been in public preview for a while and now it has recently moved to uh, to GA. So if you check this box and you have enter ID join, you go straight into your Cloud PC without any prompts or whatsoever. 
unless of course you force it via conditional access or some other sure. compliance policy that sits in between. But um, this is just a very nice end user experience. And this is an interesting one because here you can define whether we host your network. So we build your backend network infrastructure. You don't have to do anything. So you just create a cloud PC and after the provisioning you can connect. But we also have a lot of customers uh, acting on the fact of, hey, I also have my own private cloud data center environment, some intranet database application, yeah, server environment. Um, I also want to connect over the yeah, local area network over the cloud PC to that backend. And that's something we support too. So you can select the Azure network connection here and then select one of the existing Azure networks that you have. Uh, so in Azure, most likely the Azure team has VNets created there with express routes or side to side VPNs. And then you can just re-leverage that in your cloud PC and then automatically get connected to that uh, backend as well. But if you want to go for the most simple way of doing it, so what I can do here is I will uh, pick, let's say um, we pick European Union, and then you can select here which one. So we recently added Italy as well. Uh, but let's say we pick West 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 Europe. It's probably the most picked one in in, in Europe these days. Um, what happens if we finish this flow is that a cloud PC is being created in that uh, region. But the interesting thing is if you go back in the provision policy later, you can edit the region as well and then move all your cloud PCs that are in West Europe as well to Italy without losing any data. So that's a new feature we, uh, we implemented as well. Here we have the images. So what you can see here, you, you can select a custom image. So if you come from VDI and you want to reuse your VDI image, we support that too. But we recommend gallery images we have for Windows 10 and Windows 11. And those are always up to date. Then the last one is the language. So here you can define which language you want. Um, so uh, I'm Dutch, so let's do Dutch because <laughs> yeah, everybody likes people from from, from the Netherlands. I think uh, I don't know. <laughs> Great <laughs> still waffles. <laughs> <laughs> um, here you can define the cloud PC naming. So if you want to have a naming convention for your cloud PC, you can do like a CPC dash and then region slash number, something like that. So we support that too. And here you can activate Windows Auto Patch. I don't have it activated as you can see, but it, normally if you have Auto Patch activated in your tenant, you just click on Windows Auto Patch and then the Auto Patch policies will automatically be configured to your cloud PCs as well. To now that's, that Auto Patch is awesome, by the way. So for those of you who are not using the Auto Patch feature, you definitely want to take a look at that. Um, look on the learn.microsoft.com website about it. There's some great articles about it. It will save you a ton of time and it's really efficient. So great. Yeah, and it completely integrates with Windows 365. Then the last step is assign your cloud PCs to an entry ID group. And you can, I don't know, uh, Windows in the cloud uh, as a group. And then in here, you uh, add your users that then can access that cloud PC. Uh, you summarize your creation uh, and then you click create and then the cloud PC is getting proficient. And then within like 30 minutes, you can go to the Windows app or any of the other new Windows integrations, which I can show in just a bit as well, that can connect straight into your cloud PC from the you know, Windows 11 login screen, for example. Cool. cool. And I assume because it's a Windows 11 machine, you can deploy apps to it from Intune and you can manage it and support it with all of those great tools that we have there. Yeah, 100%. So Intune is as is supported. So even the new Intune Suite Enterprise Application Management capabilities, as well as EPM, um, advanced analytics, all these things, uh, Cloud yeah. PKI, yeah. everything just works with Windows 365 as well. Yeah, and if you've not seen that video, by the way, I did that with Jeremy just a little while ago. So check out my uh, Intune video. I'll, I'll stick the uh, description below um, if you've not had a chance to look at that. Awesome, okay. Now, um, you've got some new cool stuff to show us. You pro when you're like never touched virtualization as an end user, it's pretty hard to get into the VDI. You need to probably follow a nine page manual. Uh, if you take like a random person from the street and that never touched VDI and explain like what VDI is or how to connect to VDI, it's, it's a pretty hard thing to do. So what we did is we took a step back 
and reimagined the end user experience for connecting to a cloud PC and integrated a new end user experience inside Windows 11. And now with the new Surface Pro uh, 10 device with YubiKey passwordless logon support, you can go passwordless logon straight after logging into Windows straight into your cloud PC. So let me, uh, let me show you how, how that works. So what you see here is a demo where the new Surface Pro 10 uh, device has now NFC support. And then you check with NFC and your PIN or just Windows Hello in general. And then you go straight into your cloud PC. And the other great thing is that with Windows 11 and Windows 10 in your cloud PC, you support Copilot as well. So you can use Copilot on your device in the cloud as well as across all your other devices to bring Copilot like available on any device versus just on your local Windows 11 or Windows 10 PC. So um, now when you talk about FIDO key support, Christian, I know that Windows 11 now supports pass keys. That's a pretty exciting technology. And that will, of course, be deployed to the rest of Microsoft 365 and Enter ID eventually. You'll be able to pass key directly into your uh, Windows 365 PC. That's correct. So you should envision that every pass key or other improvement in Windows 11 to log on to Windows 11 locally also also comes to the, the boot integrated experience I just showed. So uh, because it just creates that same similar familiar experience you're used to to connect to Windows, whether it's like Windows or Windows 365, it should not matter to the end user. Absolutely fantastic, Christian. You've been you've showed us how you can um, boot straight into the machine from a, uh, a standard PC. That's awesome. What about mobile devices? Can I use Windows 365? Can I connect to my machines through a, a kind of a mobile device or other form factor? Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting question because as you just explained and asked me questions around, hey, older devices can stream Windows and the hardware specifically doesn't have to be that performant anymore to yeah. use Windows because it gets streamed from the cloud securely. And that's the same from other form factors and devices like your mobile phone. We did a partnership with Lenovo ThinkPhone, which is from Motorola, where you can stream Windows 11 and Windows 10 from your phone as your phone becomes like the desktop. And you can use a docking and a USB-C to HDMI and Bluetooth keyboard and mouse to make it a full PC, personal PC experience equivalent. And the great thing is that you can combine your phone and your desktop kind of investment in, in one as well. So let me show you a, a cool demo of that. So what you see here is that I'm plugging in my Lenovo Tink phone to USB-C and HDMI. And then the screen will pop up a menu which includes Windows 365, as you can see. And if I'm selecting that, my phone, because the phone is Enter ID enrolled, will see all the cloud PCs that I have assigned to me. And if I click on one of these cloud PCs, it automatically boots straight with single sign-on into that cloud PC from my phone. It's exactly what you just said, uh, Andy, your phone becomes your PC. And this is just one example, as I said before, that could change the way how devices are being re-leveraged for streaming Windows to connect to your Windows operating system in the future as well. Sure. And the same with Copilot. Copilot can be used inside this Windows like desktop environment running in the cloud from your phone as well. And think about frontline workers or um, shop floor workers as well that just have a phone in their back pocket and they just dock it in and then log in and use their apps and things like that and then go back home and do the same at home and then do their own like yeah. hourly reg registrations and, and, and I mean I'm like just that. thinking of that uh, nightmare scenario where you your luggage hasn't turned up your laptop's not turned up and you're you're on customer site and you've got to do that really important kind of presentation normally you would be sweating but hey with this you just plug you just direct connection and you can uh, you can still access your stuff 
That's awesome. I've got to do this plug because he's such a nice guy and he's agreed to do this. Um, Christian has just released a book on 365, uh, Windows 365, I suppose I should say it right. Um, so show everybody a book, Christian, if you want to. <laughs> Tell us all about it. Well, there, there are actually two books. So <laughs> two uh, this, books? Book, all right. okay. this book I released with Pearl Larson, another previous MVP around mastering Microsoft Intune. It's doing very well. The previous okay. one was like a big bestseller. You can find it on Amazon. It's yeah. uh, You can just look it up on mastering Microsoft Intune or go to AKMS slash mastering Intune. Um, this is just doing everything in tune end to end plus Windows 365. And then there's another book which is called Mastering Windows 365. And this one covers more deeply everything about Windows 365. So it goes deeper into the protocol enhancements. Um, but yeah, these are the two books that I recently wrote together with awesome. the team in the terminology even more with those books as well. That was absolutely fantastic. Hey, listen, I really appreciate you spending some time with us today. And thanks so much for those cool demos. Um, I really, really do appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Andy, for having me. And I had a blast explaining uh, the innovation we have been building as part of the team. Absolutely brilliant. And uh, we'll see you again sometime. Thanks so much. Thank you, thanks. There you go, wasn't that cool? Christian Brinkoff, Principal Product Manager for Windows 365 over there in Redmond. Thanks so much for your time and what a great insight, wasn't it? Hey, listen, questions and comments, as always, get those down below. And if you need to like and subscribe, I would appreciate it. Bump the subscribe button, ring the bell and come and join our learning community. That's it for this time. I'll see you soon. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.